This is video 10.2, our second video on the phases of mitosis, with an emphasis on how DNA changes its organization throughout cell cycling. This video covers these goals. Pause the video to check them out. Now when looking at this diagram, I want you to look critically at what form the DNA is taking. In these diagrams, DNA is the dark purple stuff. You can see that DNA starts by looking kind of like a bowl of noodles, but then DNA takes on these distinct X-shaped or V-shaped pieces. So let's talk about how and why DNA changes like this. DNA organization is complex business. People have dedicated their lives to figuring out this stuff. But up until this moment, you probably thought that DNA was organized into a double helix like this, and that was the end of the story. But DNA is two meters long, human DNA, and that two meters of DNA needs to fit into a nucleus that's only six micrometers, six microns big. So the DNA really needs to be packed up, but on the same line, still be organized so that the cell can copy the DNA and the cell can make RNA copies of the DNA during protein synthesis. To help pack and organize the DNA, DNA is wrapped around these protein complexes called histones, these pink structures right here. When you talk about DNA and its associated histones, collectively, those two together are called chromatin. Now, each individual unit of the chromatin is called a nucleosome. So right here is one nucleosome, the DNA wrapped a couple of times around the histone protein complex. Once DNA is associated with histones into nucleosomes, the packing isn't done, as shown in these pictures, where we see the DNA double helix, now histones are associated, and the DNA wraps around. The DNA is in a double helix, the DNA associates with histones and wrapped around. But we're not done yet. We've got more packing to do. Nucleosomes are twisted into fibers, and uh, fibers are twisted into loops, and loops are twisted into rosettes, and rosettes are twisted into coils, and coils are twisted into super coils. And you can see all of that stuff shown in these diagrams here. Now, it's not important to memorize all of these levels of DNA structure, but the reason we're talking about them is because the packing of DNA changes throughout the cell cycle. When DNA is being used, the DNA is less packed, but is still organized. When the DNA is moving around, the DNA is more packed. During interphase, the chromatin, DNA plus histones, is spread out. See it spread out all over the place in there? The proper term for spread out chromatin is diffuse chromatin. I like to think about DNA being diffuse when DNA is being used. See how those words are there? Having the chromatin spread out allows for easy access to the DNA to be copied during S phase of interphase and for the genes to be copied into RNA during protein synthesis. When the DNA has to move around and be sorted, however, DNA is kind of shut down and packed up. The state of chromatin being tightly packed up is called condensed chromatin. Condensed chromatin is easy to organize and to move around. It's kind of like your stuff during class. When you're using your stuff, you have it spread out all over your desk or your lab table, but when it's time to change classes, you pack it all up neatly in your bag and go to your next class until you use it again and spread it out again. There are a lot of terms that can get confusing in this process, mostly because the words all sound the same, something with chroma in them. But I want us to meet this challenge head on. Let's take a look at this slide and then we'll kind of dissect it. Humans have 46 chromosomes. These chromosomes are organized into 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes. And each chromosome can be made up of one or two chromatids. I know it's frustrating, but we can definitely do this. Well, let's start with that first statement. What's a chromosome? 
A chromosome is just a really big chunk of DNA with a lot of genes on it. Instead of having all genes attached into one super gigantic chunk of DNA in a cell, the genes are divided up. In humans, there are 46 big chunks of DNA, chromosomes. The easiest time and easiest way for scientists to see chromosomes is during late prophase or metaphase, when the DNA is condensed and condensed to be ready to move. When studying genetics, scientists can take a chromosome picture called a karyotype. After taking a picture of the chromosomes, a scientist would manipulate the picture and elements of the picture and sort the chromosomes based on their size, and the end result would be a diagram like the one that's shown here. When the chromosomes are sorted by their size, the largest chromosomes get the lowest numbers. These two chromosomes are chromosome 1, these two chromosomes are chromosome 2, and so on. So you've got the biggest chromosomes up here at chromosome 1, and the smallest chromosomes at chromosome 22. In addition, there are two sex chromosomes. In this case, it's X and Y. So that means that the karyotype of this person is a female. There are 23 pairs of chromosomes, or 46 total. Now, why would a geneticist even want to do this? Well, by organizing and comparing the chromosomes this way, scientists can see if a person has big changes in their chromosomes, like missing big chunks, having big chunks added in some place, missing whole chromosomes, or having extra chromosomes. For example, in Down syndrome, people that have Down syndrome have an extra chromosome 21, and you'd be able to see that on a karyotype. If you're ever looking at a picture of chromosomes and you have to figure out how many chromosomes there are, just count the centromeres, which are shown on this picture as these little dots. A centromere is the skinnier part right in the middle of a chromosome. In this picture, we see two chromosomes on the left, one, two, and two chromosomes on the right, one, two. We count the chromosomes by counting the number of centromeres. Now, a centromere doesn't look like a circle or a dot on a real-life chromosome, but centromeres are definitely distinct structures, as you can see right here. It kind of looks like the chromosome has a belt on. Centromeres are made of DNA, but that DNA is non-coding. It doesn't code for any proteins. At certain times, some proteins will associate with the centromeres, and we'll get to that in the next video. Those proteins will help the chromosomes move during mitosis. Now, if you haven't thought about it before, you might have thought about it during this video. Humans have 46 chromosomes, and what does that mean? Does the number of chromosomes go along with how complex an organism is, or how big an organism is, or how smart the organism is? The truth is that the number of chromosomes doesn't seem to really correlate with much of anything. For most species, though, there is a set number of chromosomes that's true for most of the organisms across the species. Most humans have 46 chromosomes, most gorillas have 48 chromosomes, but in plants, things can get a little crazy. Check out this fern. Ferns, these ferns can have 1,440 chromosomes, and it can actually differ from individual to individual. The next term on that slide a while back was homologous chromosomes. Homologous chromosomes are copies of chromosomes that have the same, same genes on them. Homologous chromosomes are the same size, so they get the same number on the karyotype. In this diagram, homologous chromosomes are shown as one being green and one being purple. The easiest way to think about this is that you get one set of chromosomes from your mom and one set of chromosomes from your dad. So one chromosome one is from your mom and one of the chromosome ones is from your dad. The same is true of chromosome two, chromosome three, and on and on until chromosome 22 and the sex chromosomes. Each pair is called a homologous pair because they code for the same genes, so they go together. Finally, we have the term chromatid. Chromatids are what make the chromosome look like 
an X, like these guys over here, or an I, like these guys, which look like a V on one of the other diagrams. The Vs are just these guys that are, that are moving, so the, the chromosome arms are angled rather than straight. Another name for a chromosome um, with one chromatid is a single-stranded chromosome. And another name for a chromosome with two chromatids is a double-stranded chromosome. During the, the S phase, so normally a chromosome has one chromatid, but during the S phase of interphase, the DNA is duplicated. So at that point, chromosomes go from being single-stranded to being double-stranded, like this guy right here. So, um, in other words, chromosomes go from having one chromatid to two chromatids. Each chromatid is an exact copy of its partner. So this guy over here on the left is an exact copy of the chromatid on the right. The partners are called sister chromatids. And keeping the sister chromatids attached at the centromere really helps the DNA stay organized during the sorting process that happens during mitosis. The chromatids will become separated, but only after all of the chromosomes get organized. So let's apply these terms back to the big picture. All of the stages of the cell cycle have chromatin because DNA needs to be organized on histones. What changes is whether that chromatin is diffuse or condensed. Chromatin is diffuse during interphase because the DNA is being used when that DNA is being copied during S phase. During prophase, though, this DNA is getting ready to be moved, so the chromatin packs up or becomes condensed. Chromatin is fully condensed during metaphase when the chromosomes move to the middle, and chrom chromatin is fully condensed during anaphase when the chromosomes are moving towards the opposite poles. When the DNA is settled down into two separate final piles at the end of telophase, now the chromatin can move from being condensed to diffuse again and unpack, because the chromosomes no longer have to move. In addition, all stages of the cell cycle have chromosomes, large pieces of DNA with lots of genes. Cells doing their normal job have single-stranded chromosomes with one chromatid, but during the S phase of interphase, the DNA is copied. So now the chromosomes are double-stranded with two chromatids. And you can't tell in this picture of interphase because the DNA is still diffuse. You can only really see the differences after the DNA condenses. So sister chromatids stay together to help this DNA sorting process stay organized. So you can see here the sister chromatids are together, and during metaphase, the sister chromatids are together. And uh, you can definitely see these chromosomes with, with two chromatids here. At anaphase, the sister chromatids separate, with one of each chromatid moving towards opposite sides. At anaphase, the double-stranded chromosomes again become single-stranded. Let's also consider the chromosome number here. During metaphase, you can see four double-stranded chromosomes. Count the centromeres. One, two, three, four. During anaphase, sister chromatids split. Are these separate chromosomes now? Well, if we follow the rule of counting centromeres, you can see that in anaphase, not only have the chromatids separated, but each chromatid becomes its own separate chromosome. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So in anaphase, we still have eight chromatids, but now we consider those eight chromosomes. Whereas in metaphase, we had eight chromatids, but just four chromosomes. So let's recap. For DNA to be organized, DNA is associated with organizing proteins called histones. Together, DNA and histones are called chromatin. DNA 
is separated into really big chunks called chromosomes, each with a bunch of genes. Chromosomes are diffuse or spread out when being used and condense or pack up during prophase to move and then become diffuse again after telophase when they don't need to move anymore. Eukaryotic cells have homologous chromosome pairs with one maternal and one paternal chromosome. Chromosomes are normally single-stranded with one chromatid, but become double-stranded with two chromatids during S phase when DNA is duplicated, and remain double-stranded until anaphase when the sister chromatids separate. We've got one more video on the phases of mitosis, and we'll go over some of this stuff in class. So be sure to ask some questions to make this stuff clear.